If you believe in life after reef, ding dong, the reef is gone. Bop, ba da da bop, 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 bop. Minnesota Fighting Vikings have cut nine-year veteran left tackle uh, Riley Reef after the Vikes gave him the old tomato. Uh, take a pay cut slash restructure or a cut cut. So Riley Reef chose to take the cut. Now, uh, I had thought that Reef would take the restructure slash pay cut because uh, I think it's extremely unlikely that he uh, secures a sizable deal uh, in the market at this stage of the season. Uh, sure, there will be suitors, uh, but likely nowhere near the level that even uh, the cut pay uh, would have been. So it is what it is. Business decision. Vikings have put the screws to veteran uh, offensive linemen before. You look at uh, John Sullivan 2016. You look at Alex uh, Boone 2017. Now, if only they did this with other positions. Like linebacker. I don't know. It's just weird, right? Uh, but the Vikings offered the former Hawkeye, Billy Martin. He declined. Uh, and now it's time to start the Brian O'Neill dynasty or Rashad Hill or Ezra Cleveland or whatever the hell they do. I'm probably going to be mad about whatever they do, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, addition by subtraction here with uh, Riley Reef. So now... Cash Strap Vikings either will have uh, 8.8 .8 million or 11 million off the 2020 cap, depending on how they want to structure uh, the 4.4 million dollars in dead money, which was this prorated 11 million dollar signing bonus over five seasons. So let's say goodbye. All right, so Riley Reef, 2012 first round pick uh, by the Lions out of Iowa. Fun fact, he was the second offensive lineman taken in that draft. Do you remember who the first one was? Yes, Matt Khalil, number four overall. Just good memories, good times. Uh, was a five-year starter for the Lions, uh, first four at left tackle. Uh, finally, uh, Final season in the Motor City, moved to right tackle to make way for Taylor Decker, which, man, if you can't beat out Taylor Decker, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, 2017 free agency, even though he had been demoted, moved to right tackle, the Vikings were like, okay, we're just going to put it on the table. Five-year, $58.75 million deal with the Vikings. Uh, and remember, that was the offseason where the Vikings uh, had in place a, a long-term blockbuster deal with uh, left tackle Russell Okun. So, a Reef was their backup plan. It may have be even been plan C, but, you know. Uh, but he was as advertised as most Iowa offensive linemen are. Perfectly average, meat and potato, corn-fed, eight uh, offensive lineman, and he was. like uh, He always hovered around the top 12 to 18 in terms of PFF grades. Uh, last season, he allowed 32 pressures and six sacks. But, aha, as we pointed out, he gave up exactly half of his pressures and half of his sacks in the big-time games that mattered. Uh, both of the Packers games uh, at Chicago, where the Vikings just had to lay up to beat uh, uh, Chase Daniel. Yeah, it couldn't happen. Uh, and then, of course, the Niners game where Reef allowed six pres pressures and a sack, basically sing single-handedly uh, handing the game over to Nick Bosa and uh, the Niners, which if the Vikings would have won that game, setting up a Packers-Vikings NFC Championship game. Woo! Come on. Come on, son. But, man. All right, so Reef, uh, like we mentioned, will have suitors in free agency. Uh, notably, the Eagles makes a ton of sense since they've had injuries to Brandon Brooks as well as um, uh, Andre Dillard, who blew out his bicep. Uh, Chargers uh, could be in the mix, uh, other teams uh, as well. But uh, now, now that Riley Reef's gone, although I may be hexing myself because I think that there still is a minute chance that, uh, that Riley Reef finds out that he can't get any sort of a semblance of a decent deal out there anywhere. He returns to the Vikings at a, a discounted rate to play guard. But man, but now that he's probably gone, I can say that I was never, I was never really on board with Riley Reef. Like I thought that he was massively overpaid. I thought that the Vikings panicked, uh, you know, like they did with Mike Remmers. I uh, remember that off season, uh, the Vikings ideally were in on Russell Okun as well as uh, pretty Ricky Wagner, which. Man, missed a landmine on Wagner, but could you say that Wagner was a bigger failure than Mike Remmers? I don't know. It, it is close. But they massively overpaid Reef and Remmers, and it was a overcorrection of Spielman ignoring the offensive line for so long. So he massively overpaid two guys who shouldn't have gotten that money. Uh, and also, Reef, he turtled up in the biggest games. Like, he was um, a, a symptom. Like, he was a microcosm of how the Vikings operated the last couple of years, where you beat up on lower-level competition. All of a sudden, when the lights are uh, bright, 71 is blinded by the light. Revved up like a deuce. Uh, yeah. uh, so I, I think... Also, you remember in 2017, he walked in as a team captain without ever being in the locker room. I don't, I don't think he was ever the leader or the captain that he was advertised to be. He was always very curt uh, with the media. In fact, he even skipped a couple of media appearances. So, yeah, nah, 
Nah. Uh, frankly, I, I think that the Vikings are better off with them. A, you save on cap space. B, you allow some of these younger guys to step in and, and get some reps. So whether it's Brian O'Neill explore, exploring the left tackle space, if it's Rashad Hill, uh, if Ole Udo is going to get in the mix of right tackle, if Ezra Cleveland is going to be in there, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But either way, you're looking towards the future. And I, I do think that the Vikings, even in the present, this isn't a big step back. Actually, this isn't a step back at all. I think that it's relatively neutral, uh, even if it is Rashad Hill. Uh, and then uh, looking down the line, like it's going to benefit everyone. All right, so my main gripe is, is how they handled Ezra Cleveland. So if the prospect of cutting Ryla Reef was always on the table, why not get Ezra any significant left tackle snaps? Why? Why? All right, so now you just uh, now you just have tape of a rookie left tackle who'd only play left tackle throughout his entire career playing left guard. That that's all you have, and then basically kneecapped him and uh, took him out of the running of potentially replacing Reef as a rookie. But I'll digress. But uh, to put a bow on Reef, I I think too often in life we settle for average, and Riley Reef was average and settling for average in relationship in sandwiches in entertainment in vacations and jobs and everything right but life is literally too short to settle i mean yes giving up average to pursue excellence it involves some risk it's like well what if we don't even get average back well then at least you'll know and humans by nature are risk adverse i understand that but why are you settling for subway when you know that your ass deserves a ribeye riley reef was subway well, Riley Reef was overpriced Subway, like getting a Subway at the airport. But get yourself a ribeye. Let's go. Let's go. All right. All right. So your thoughts. Vikings cut Riley Reef. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support that work? Pull us on the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.